So Tesla recently released uh, a new mobile app. Um, I think it's version 4.2.0-693. I'm not sure exactly <clears throat> what the specific des designation is, but it came out recently in October of 2021. And with that, also a new uh, operating system or the car, you know, software version uh, 2021.36. And with that, um, well, the mobile app has a lot of new kind of UI visualizations. Uh, you probably noticed that. Um, and I'm actually not going to spend time on that. There's there's plenty of videos on on that already. What I'm going to talk about is some of the new features that came out with both that Tesla software on the car as well as the mobile app that work together. And I'm talking about how to access some of this new data and commands via the unofficial Tesla API. And there's four main ones. Um, the first one is you can set the charging amps uh, as you can do inside the car, but you couldn't do that in the mobile app before. Um, you can set the scheduled charging time. Again, you could do that in the car, but not in the app until now. And uh, scheduled departure, which also you can do that in the car console, but not in the mobile app. And the last one is they added recently um, like a, a power wall charge level history. So before it was only available at that uh, at a specific time, but it didn't ha track a history of it. But apparently they've they've had that for a while. So let's go into to each one. So the first one in terms of set charge amps, you could see here in the in the app here, there's a little arrow and there's like up and down. So you can set um, just again, just like you do in the car, you can turn it up or down. And that essentially um, sets how fast it'll charge based on the available um, electricity um, that's available to that to that charger. And so um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's quite uh, convenient to do that. And, um, you know, I'll show you the, the code here. And so here uh, you can see the endpoint. It's called set charging amps. And um, wasn't too difficult to guess. I had to guess maybe for five or ten minutes. But uh, you only have to pass this one uh, parameter in the payload for the post called charging amps, uh, which is slightly confusing because when you get the output parameter, it's called charge amps. But anyway, you just pass it in here and it'll set it. Um, you could do it that way. And then um, the second one is the schedule charging. And so this is the one where you can set it that in this location, um, I don't, when I plug it in, I don't want you to charge immediately. I want you to charge at this time, usually at an off peak rate. Right, so um, again, you do this in the car and it'll tell you here, um, if you go in here, uh, you can say, I wanna enable it and then say, when do you want it to start? All right, just like in the car. And the code for that is uh, a new endpoint they published called um, set schedule charging. That's the endpoint. And then um, the payload is a little bit trickier, um, but uh, you, know, you can guess it by looking at the UI that, um, for some reason, they need this enable, right, which is like the little toggle uh, here that, you know, switches it on and off. So you say, uh, yes, I want it enabled, and then you pass in the time. Now, the tricky part is um, the time is in minutes. So I give you an example here. So if you want it to be 7 a.m., um, you know, multiply by 60 minutes plus 30, it's 450. Uh, so it'll tell you it'll start charging at 7.30 a.m. And that's how you pass the information for scheduled charging um, <clears throat> to do it just like you would do in the mobile app here. Um, and then the, uh, you know, the, I had to, you know, just in case you're wondering, I had to rely on LOP on the, the, um, the decompiled mobile app to, to get through that. Um, but, you know, what I also noticed was anytime I called this function um, to set the, the charging, which I do do that, um, in some of my scripts, it sometimes immediately starts the car charging, which actually does that too when you're in the in the car itself. So what I do when I call it, um, it seems to work is once I call this command, I immediately call a stop charge command. So there's there's an old endpoint that you could do that with. And so I just do that and then it seems to not charge right there and wait till the actual time I'm supposed to charge. Um, the third one is called scheduled departure. Um, and this one I don't, don't use i'll explain a little bit more later but this was a very difficult to guess you can see here there's a lot of different toggles about precondition 
Um, do you want to charge during off peak? Was it you know during certain times? So you can see here it's a lot more complicated, and I had to rely a lot on the mobile app, the decom decompile mobile app, mobile app to um, to get to get the right parameters to pass. Um, and uh, a lot of the parameters don't have the same name as the uh, the output version. So um, if you see down here, there's quite a bit more you have to pass. So you have to pass um, enable true. Um, and then the departure time, which is also in minutes, as as it is for schedule time. So departure time is this part right here, right? So when do you want the car to be ready by? And then um, if you want to precondition at the time, you have to say enable, and this is a true false um, uh, you know value. And then this one preconditioning weekdays only, which is the toggle, the toggle between. Um, uh, the toggle between the the week all week and weekdays it's actually a true value a true false value here um, off peak enabled right true false here and then off peak charging weekdays only or we you know all week that's these two that's also a true false value and then you pass a time in for the period of time which you um, presumably if the off peak time ends earlier it'll try to finish charging by the off peak time to save you money if you have this enabled. So that's this one called off peak, uh, end off, off peak time. And this also is calculated in minutes. So quite a bit more complicated um, to do that. And it took, like I said, quite a while to, to guess, properly guess all these or look them up. Um, <clears throat> and that's how you use this one from an API point of view, this, this scheduled uh, departure. Um, and the very last one is um, this one, which you may have noticed, um, by the way, all the visualizations kind of change here. So I didn't bother changing them because kind of like the way I have them, but um, it's based on the same for information. The only one that's different is this one, the power wall charge level, it tracks a history of it. Before it wasn't available, it only gave you the current charge at a particular time. So they apparently they've been tracking this and um, I would have never guessed how to get this uh, parameter. So definitely use the decompiled app for that. So it's it turns out it uses the same uh, calendar history as it does for a lot to get a lot of the other information. And then the kind is called SOE, which I presume stands for state of energy. So you just have to pass that kind and then it gives you all the values and it's in 15 minute increments. So you'll get this information um, going back. I think until you can get it going back until the um, till the point when your thing, your power wall is installed. So I probably, I might be missing some parameters. I think you probably could pass a period and a, and a start and end date, which, uh, I haven't done yet yet, but, uh, you can easily do that based on the pattern of the other calendar history types. Um, yeah. So, you know, in, in closing, um, I think these are really exciting new features. Um, and, and, um, I definitely, uh, you know, maybe the power wall level, charge level, not so much because previously you, there was an API previously that you can get it in five min minute increments, but it, you have to save the values. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't save it for you. So you, so you have to store it. So, but the other stuff in terms of charging amps, I think that's a great feature because if you're in a scenario where you have a power outage, you can, you know, remotely from your app or through the API lower the charge level um, so that you don't draw too quickly from the power wall. There's a feature like that where you can set in the app how much you want to charge um, based off of when you're off grid, um, how much battery you want to use. But this this gives you a little bit more control, so that's quite nice. Um, this the schedule, the set schedule charging, um, that's one that I've been waiting for for a long time because, as you know from my previous videos, I've read a lot of various codes to use like triggers and backup triggers to to really simulate this and make the car charge. But it was a lot of errors. Uh, a lot of error, it was very error prone. Sometimes the car doesn't wake up. So now I could just figure out the time and just set it directly through the API in the car and it'll just wake up. And so far it hasn't failed a single time. So um, I think that's, you know, um, using the car's native function to do that is much more preferred. Um, you know, schedule charging, I think it's a nice feature. Unfortunately, I don't use it. It doesn't seem to work the way, um, it just doesn't seem to work the way it should. Um, seems like it's kind of buggy, but you know, at least you can do it uh, do it remotely if you need, if you do use this function. And um, I'll close out also by saying, you know, <clears throat> you know, if you, you may be wondering, um, I haven't made, an, why I haven't made a new video um, if on the new, it's called reCAPTCHA 
check that Tesla recently added to their authentication to get the tokens. It's because, uh, you know, frankly, I'm just too lazy. And, um, and I can't keep up with all these changes they're making. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, it's great that they're investing in the security, and, and that's, that's, that's a good thing to do, but it's just a pain for you know, the amateurs like me. So for now, I'm personally just using the refresh token API and just getting a new one every time, and it bypasses everything uh, for the recapture. It's much simpler. But there are people who have already solved it, so you know, if you really wanted to, you can look that up and uh, figure a way to uh, refactor that code and get it to work. So... Anyway, for now, um, that's it. Um, you know, feel free to leave a comment if any questions. If you found this useful, please feel free to like and subscribe and use my referral code if you're uh, interested in buying uh, any Tesla products. And, uh, and I link that in the uh, description. So have a good day.